National Teen Driver Safety Week is almost over, but that doesn't mean the conversation about safe driving habits shouldn't continue on with our teens. We actually have Michael Harley, the executive editor of Kelly Blue Book, with his teen son, Patrick, here today, and they're going to share why it's so important to have these discussions. Welcome, gentlemen. How are you? Oh, we're doing great. Thanks for having us on. Definitely. Great, thank you. Okay, so it's Teen Driver Safety Week. Can you give us the latest statistics on teenage driving in the U.S.? Uh, the statistics are actually very, very sobering. Uh, most people don't realize crashes are the number one cause of teen deaths between the ages of 15 and 18 years old. Uh, teenagers, drivers, new drivers, 16 to 17 years old, are nearly four times as likely to be involved in a deadly crash. And half of those teens aren't even belted when they die. Wow, that is definitely staggering. And uh, you have Patrick there with you, so I imagine as a parent, it's something that you take very seriously. So what are some driving habits that are good for teens to kind of take partake in? Well, there are a couple of ways to approach this. First, uh, the parents have to set a good example. Statistics show that uh, parents that have good, clean driving records and are safe drivers, their teens are also probably going to be good drivers as well. You know, the parents have to make sure they're not distracted, they wear their seatbelt, they're attentive, and they pay attention. Another thing is there's a lot of technology now that automakers are rolling out that help the, uh, the teen drive when the parents aren't in the car. Uh, Ford, for example, in 2010 rolled out something called My Key, and it's literally a second key you hand to your teenager that gives them a seatbelt reminder. You know, if they don't have the seatbelt latched, there's no music. Uh, it limits the volume of the, the audio system. It gives them speed alerts. It even locks out incoming calls and text messages when it's hooked up to Ford Sync. It also gives them a low uh, early fuel warning if they're about to run out of gas. So it does a bunch of things. It's a, I don't want to say it's babysitting because that's what Patrick said, but uh, you know it just helps teens uh, have better practices when they're, they're behind the wheel. That's great. It's the My Key basically eliminates all of the temptations that might be out there. Now, Patrick, you've actually had some experience with this feature, right? What was that like? Uh, at first, uh, I will admit I was a bit uh, tentative. I was I was worried that it'd be like he said a babysitter, but um, I realized quickly that as long as you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, which is strapping in and going the speed limit, you really don't um, notice it as much and. The one thing I did come to notice was that the volume limiter was um, really like the only noticeable difference as opposed to a regular key, but I mean it's much better than having him sitting in the passenger seat turning the radio off or playing his music. So. <laughs> Which I imagine probably happens with every parent. I, you know, I'm 32 years old and my mom still till this day, she'll right. be like, honey, buckle up, buckle up. So I totally get it. Michael, can you tell us where <laughs> exactly. our viewers can go for more information? If you want more, more information about the uh, Ford's My Key program, go to Ford.com. If you want more information about vehicles that are on the market or coming on the market that have these technologies, go to Kelly Blue Book, which is KBB.com. We'd like to thank Ford for sponsoring that segment.